Hi team, welcome to the session on Coffee with Prab. And today we have a special guest, my brother Krish. He is basically primarily into cloud security, cloud security governance, and all that. So I thought we will basically cover one podcast where we're going to discuss about cloud security governance. How are you, Krish? How are you? Hey Prab. Hi everyone. So it's indeed a privilege to be part of this Prab Nair show. It's you know again. I uh, still part of the infosec train i still have a privilege to be part of this it's really good right so krish what is special today in this 15 20 minutes podcast what we have what we going to discuss so we'll start with the cloud security governance topic and we'll plan some multiple videos on that which mm. as a series which will mm. definitely help the people to understand the concepts of this see when you're talking about on prem scenario when we having a in, we have a in house servers data center infrastructures and everything pretty much we control everything you know we yes. have a visibility of everything and it is easy yes. for us to manage a governance mm-hmm. uh, in the on prem those who are not okay. aware about the governance governance is like a set of operations daily we creating a policy procedures mm-hmm. strategies to manage the people process and technology but when it comes to cloud we always have this dilemma because cloud is also two type public and private public is also private is also two type build or buy so when it comes to this kind of a concept of public cloud or over the public we creating a virtual private cloud how we basically manage the governance what what is cloud security governance and uh, how we basically manage in the case of such kind of a cloud okay so when talking about the uh, topic called as cloud governance like you said it's a set of process rules or controls which we have in our business to ensure that our business is working properly and it's aligning with the proper goals the same thing is applicable for cloud as well cloud governance is also essentially the same set of rules process controls on how your organization uses the cloud services like maybe it can be aws azure or on premises wherever it is so it's like the same process or same kind of rules policies procedures controls and all these things how we are doing on the cloud platform like for example when i say when i say i'm going to a cloud platform it's not a simple thing because we are taking all our data our infrastructure applications customer information compliant information we have a lot of stuff we are taking to the cloud platform and i like the same way we are concerned about and we are making policies and other security stuff in the on premises when you are moving into the cloud platform again we have to think about those kind of security aspects specifically that's the reason why when talking about cloud governance it's essentially a critical part of the corporate it governance or corporate governance we can say to make sure that whatever we are taking into the cloud platform is aligning with the proper business requirements can you can you give us one example so i want to break down this entire session in two part mm-hmm. first is explain in a term that okay everyone can understand so i'm sure we have a lot of crowd who coming from a non security background or they might have a cloud experience but they don't have a security or governance background so what is cloud security governance in layman term and why we need that okay first i'll start with an example so let's suppose that we have a data in our on premises so when you have a data in the on premises we don't simply store them in any with a, uh, any random set of controls instead of that we put up different different levels of control security and all based on the classification of data like for example if it's a data which is compliant with the gdpr hipaa or any kind of frameworks like that or if we have a data which is we will classify as sensitive we will put some different kind of controls and all the same stuff when we are taking to the cloud platform it doesn't change anything there also we are again concerned about safety of data the security of data the uh, data encryption the the classification the sensitivity all these concerns we have in the cloud as well when talking about the word called as cloud governance again essentially this is the process or again cloud security governance this is the process why we are making sure that these data we are having in the cloud platform is secured as per the proper business requirements so my business says that i have to make sure my data is properly encrypted my data has a proper access control my data have, must have a proper confidentiality my data must have a proper availability retention so all these concerns which we have in the on premises when it is taken to the cloud platform it must be also considered and it must be also uh you know managed that's the reason why we go for a cloud governance so in a simple terminology cloud governance is a oversight i can say it's a oversight or a, a control we are having to make sure that whatever we are taking into the cloud platform is completely under our control properly plus it's able to align with our proper business goals and requirements okay so we can say like that the way we basically creating a strategy policies and everything to be aligned with the business objective so with the limited cost we can able to manage the assets in the on prem same like we have 
in a dynamic state of cloud environment, managing everything to be aligned with the business requirements. We create a strategy, we create a policy that is called as a cloud security governance. It is all exactly. about how you control, manage, and have a visibility of the data. Exactly. Now, on one side, we say MSSP, which is called as a managed service provider, where provider deploy the solution, manage the things. In a cloud service provider, ownership has given to the user. So, Krish, my question is basically why there was a need of cloud security governance where if I go for a SaaS model where con vendor basically control everything, uh, we basically pay for subscription of what interface I use or user-based subscription we have in the case of SaaS. Then what, what is the need of going for the uh, 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 cloud, cloud security, security governance in that case? Yeah. Okay, that's an interesting question because there are two two things which we have to keep in mind. First of all, we have a word called as cloud. It's just a fancy terminology, you know, like at the end of the day, it's just a fancy term. It's just a remote data center. When you say cloud, means you, you, everyone will have seen that joke which is passing out on the internet, like there's no cloud, it's just someone else's computer, right? So the same thing is working everywhere. When you go to a cloud computing, when you go to a vendor called as AWS or Azure or GCP, that is just another data center or set of data centers managed by a third party called as a cloud service provider. So obviously you are giving your data, your infrastructure, your applications, everything you're hosting on a third party provider's premises. And obviously that going to make us in a lot of challenges, which is not pronounced in the on-premises. For example, let's say now you have a data in the on-premises where you are having putting all the controls and all, or now you have an identity management on-premises. But when you take it to the cloud platform, especially when you go for PaaS models or SaaS models, etc., you are giving a lot more control to the cloud service provider. In that perspective, how can I basically uh, just simply give it to him and sit peacefully? I need to make sure I need to have a proper set of policies. I need to have a proper visibility and control, monitoring, auditing, review. Everything must be there. The second thing is that why I am concerned because I am the data owner. When you basically go to the cloud platform, doesn't mean that you are giving all the responsibilities to the cloud service provider. You are offloading all your headaches. No, never. At the end of the day, when you go to a cloud platform, except a certain things like physical security and all, everything is still the liability of the cloud service customer. That is a data owner, your company. Then in that case, obviously, you know, I must be concerned for sure, right? That's it. So my question is basically, if I want to start cloud security governance, there should be some hmm. first, some steps has to yes. be followed. So do you share the step-by-step -step process, how to drive the cloud security governance in the organization or in the cloud, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a very important thing. Any which ways, when you basically talk about governance or if you talk about cloud security governance specifically, the first thing is that understand your goals and objectives and requirements. That's always, you know, either if you go for on-premise or cloud, that's the same thing. Before you go to governance, you have to understand why this governance, why do you want to basically have a cloud governance? What is the expectation you have what is the objectives you have what is the expectation you have on defining a cloud security governance and clearly understand your business requirements that's a first step getting the business requirements what do you expect from the cloud platform what are the areas where you are able to properly you know manage or what are areas you want to get a proper visibility everything you must define first of all then you must establish the proper baselines this is what i expect i will expect a minimum of this encryption i will expect a minimum of this visibility i will expect a minimum of this audit report like this i need to first of all define my governance goals and objectives that's the first thing which we always have and then based on that we have to define a governance framework we can get the support of many things like we have this cobit itil that nist a lot of things are there or we can create a customized one for our requirement and based on that we can build a proper governance framework again it's a detailed step, which we will, it's again for another video, which we have to prefer if you talk about that particular defining a cloud governance framework. And then for each areas like identity and access management, data security, vulnerability assessment, pen testing, then cost management for all these things, we have to create a proper policies, procedures, and baselines as per the requirements we have set first. Okay. And if, even though we have done all of these things, we have to make sure these are properly implemented and properly monitored in a regular basis so that these are happening properly. This is the very high level overview. But again, this can be expanded in a much more detailed way of, as per the business requirements. So, so let's take one case study. Okay. With a case study, how can we drive this? Let's take example, there is a company who, who are into the healthcare services. Okay. And they have decided they, they want to go for a cloud and all that. What is a, what is a, perspective we will basically that, follow there. Perfect. 
when when you basically have a healthcare organization this healthcare organization let's suppose that they are working in the us so obviously they have to comply with the hipaa in the first space where we define the goals and objectives of this particular governance the most important thing is that we have to identify the business requirements okay now i am handling the phi i am handling the personal healthcare data i am handling some kind of a very sensitive data so what are the guidelines we have or what are the predefined requirements we have for protecting a sense data which is hipaa compliant or gdpr compliant or whatever standards we are going to follow that particular set of requirements we have to clearly understand and for that kind of data we are having what level of security we have to provide as per the compliance or business requirements so once you understand now you okay it's a healthcare data so as per the healthcare data gdpr requirements let's say we have to keep our data for 5 6 years or we have to provide this aes 256 encryption we have to have a secure key management we have to have a proper identity and access management so all this stuff we have to properly define initially and based on that we have to define a proper governance framework and uh, nowadays you know if you are talking about hipaa and all the predefined frameworks things are available on the internet from the when, when the cl- from the cloud service providers itself just in case if you are looking for one just google aws hipaa framework architecture etc you will be able to find the whole framework there there they will give you the valid controls which is usable in the cloud platform in terms of hipaa or the particular standard you're looking for and based on that you have to plan for the identity and access management you have to plan for something called as a data security okay now i have to use this kind of a storage for this encryption this access control this level of monitoring a uh, data retention policy so all these things we can define as per the cloud service provider and again continuous monitoring and before all these things one more thing i wanted to add is that when you go to a cloud service provider who is basically let's say you want to store a healthcare data you have to see if the provider is also having any any previous compliance with that we called as compliance inheritance the benefit is that if the provider is already hipaa compliant or gdpr compliant when you implement the compliance on the cloud platform it would be more easier for you because the providers can provide the necessary compliant tools for you like that okay so this is how we basically ensure everything so my my question is basically you know what is the top 5 practice you would like to recommend okay when you do- de- dealing with the cloud security governance uh, or when you talking about the best practice of cloud security functions okay especially the in the first, case of uh, multi cloud environment indeed that's a very important point so first thing is obviously setting our goals right before we go to any cloud from setting our goals right is the first thing said uh, having a proper sla and contract is the most important thing especially when you're going for multi vendors it can be a bit challenging because it can be customized for the different vendors but have a proper sla and contract as per the proper requirements is a very important second thing the third thing is that have a proper effective identity and access management the fourth the fourth thing is that have a proper data security mechanisms you are having the fifth thing is that have a proper security assessment regular auditing and regular third party assessment reports review these are the five things which i prefer initially okay even though we have more this is the more the high, the, the high priority things which we have when talking about security and compliance that's great and if someone want to learn about this cloud security governance and all that how 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 he can basically learn like do you have any recommendations or indeed. references yeah indeed so uh, there are many ways you can learn about cloud security governance but again i would prefer that when a person is learning about cloud security governance don't bias it to a platform because like i am going to like for example currently i am working in a company where they are using aws and i learn all, everything about aws tomorrow my company may go to multi cloud strategy or maybe my my company will adopt a hybrid cloud model and all this kind of stuff so have when learning about compliance don't think simply about one single vendor learn in a generic perspective that's the first thing don't simply think about one single vendor the second most important thing is that when you're learning you have many programs out there in the market which can help you with that like you have a ccsp you have a ccsk you have a ccak you have a cissp you have a lot of certification like this which can give you a thorough understanding of the governance again when learning from, learning that particular things learn from the proper industry experts that's the first thing because simply don't learn for passing the exam or simply don't learn about memorizing things just learn the actual concepts right and see how you can practically apply that in your company you must be able to correlate and you must be able to apply that practically in your business i just want to add one more stuff because whenever i train i train people this is what i tell them first when you basically go for a certification called a ccsp or let's say ccsk we have a we have a something called as a let's say 
uh, choosing a cloud service provider when choosing a cloud service provider as a cloud security professional or a cloud governance professional you must have a clear set of criteria which you must learn from all these courses to make sure that this is the baselines we have to or this is the metrics we have to use for analyzing the cloud service provider or identifying the valid cloud service provider as per your business requirements so okay. that kind Why? of mindset because i means like for example now normally if you if you ask someone which is the best cloud service providers they will say aws gcp azure and a lot of stuff like that at the end of the day this is the rule number 1 which we always follow nothing is best until unless it's able to meet our business requirements so when you go to when you go to choosing a cloud service provider it's like we have to first of all define this is what i expect this is what i need from the cloud service provider and if this guy can provide me this in a more effective manner i'll go to that vendor like that it's all about uh having the proper understanding of what you need to get from the cloud service provider and that's what you get for if you learn ccsp or ccsk cissp uh, and all these kind of uh, governance programs that's it that's that's a great insight actually uh, krish you have shared on this area so the last point um nowadays what happen is when it come to data control and everything is a first priority for any professional so mm-hmm. when it come to data management or data functions and all that what is your what is your <clears throat> uh what is your view point of data sovereign data localizations and all that okay when you go to a cloud platform especially when you go to a public cloud platform one major concern we are talking about is the location of data even though the cloud service provider says that they will store our data in india only or maybe australia or us or germany wherever it is at the end of the day we need to have an assurance regarding that because again you said data sovereignty and data location localization all these things lead to the compliance or com- or these are based on compliance and other factors so because of this thing if something goes wrong at the end of the day it's going to affect my business reputation it going to affect my business so to make sure we are in a safer track we have to always make sure the cloud service provider is initially when you're assessing the cloud service provider we have to make sure that the csp is able to provide us the proper security controls as per our business requirements for securing our data plus we have to review the cloud service providers uh, default sla and we, if you, if needed we have to make a customized sla and contract and we have to ask them for regular third party assessment reports like soc reports and kind of stuff like that which will give us more assurance that is that is great krish and uh, thanks thanks for the great insight you have shared on this particular topic dear team if you watching this particular video do share your suggestion and comment box uh, that you know what is the next topic for which we can disturb krish and uh, we are also planning one uh, one uh, series also on ccsp exam pointers do let me know what is your interest on that area so your comments your feedbacks are very very important for us which help us to improve our sessions thank you krish thank you for everything you have did for this particular session and uh, we looking forward for the another session which we planning in a in a in a coming days indeed thanks a lot prop thanks a lot team so this is all from our side for more information to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic good day bye